Welcome to Is It Beer Yet? Video Edition. I am Matt, and this is the 13 beers for Halloween from Neozaz.com set of videos for this series with beer number eight, one I have been waiting to talk about since the beginning of this project because it was the first beer I didn't brew, but the first beer recipe I came up with when I started this project, and it's Twisted Tater. And you may have heard the Twisted Tater 2 episode. You kind of know what its inspiration is. It is the snack from Halloween Horror Nights and a couple other events at Universal Studios, but Halloween Horror Nights is where I was introduced to it and where I always have it. And I also, I knew about the, the other, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Inspiration, the motivator to do this beer. I knew about the Idaho number no. seven hop. And whenever I hear of the name of the state Idaho, I think of potatoes. And I just get this idea of these hops that look like potatoes are growing out of a potato field. So I wanted to do something with that hop. And when I decided to do this for Halloween Horror Nights 28, Twisted Tater was a natural name. It just, it just was perfect. So the style, that's a little interesting. It's a brown ale. I, uh, if you heard Twisted Tater 2, I feature that hop solely in that beer. This one, I was like, okay, what could I do? I can't, well, I was gonna say I was gonna say I can't make a beer from a potato, but maybe I can. That's for a different set of projects. But I wonder what also what also do I think of when I think of potatoes? I think of of, of a potato and they're brown. So it hit me. I've never done a brown ale, and it's a style I forget I like because for some bizarre reason I don't seem to encounter them much around here. I mean, if I haven't said this before in any of the videos, I'm in Orlando, Florida. I don't know why I don't see brown ales like I used to when I lived up north. I used to live in the northeast. And I forget that I like the style. So I thought, potatoes are brown, brown ale. Use the Idaho 7 hop in there somewhere. We got our Twisted Tater beer. So that is what we got. I would love to show you some pictures and video of this brewing process. And I do have one video that I will share later. And I'll tell you the story of what happened. But let me explain what's in this, because I've already talked about the hop list, or the hop, the, I'm sorry, the single hop, the Idaho, Idaho 7 hop, but obviously that's not all that's in the beer. So I'm gonna have to refer to my notes. I'm gonna have to look away from the camera here quite a bit, I'm afraid, because I don't have this memorized to tell you what's all in this, but let's go through the grain bill. I'll do it as quickly as I can here. So we start off with the, the base grains. In this case, it is 1.36 ounces of two row pale malt. Again, I've scaled this down from a five gallon recipe because I have not, done a brown ale before and if i end up liking this i again i forget i really like brown ales i might want to make this in a bigger batch specialty malt 6.8 ounces of munich malt 3.4 ounces of white wheat malt 2.6 ounces of carapils malt 2.1 ounces of crystal 60 l and 1.6 ounce of 15 l malt i said and but there's one more because i didn't realize my note was so long and 1.7 ounce of chocolate malt and if you, if you did see the Twisted Tater 2 episode, the reason I didn't make this first or before that one is because I was short one grain and it was the chocolate malt. And the chocolate malt is a huge factor in making a brown ale. So I had to wait till I had that, uh, got that in. I needed it for another beer, another set of beers actually coming up here shortly that we'll be talking about in this series. So I was like, okay, I'll rearrange the calendar. Names, it's, uh, I'll just explain what happened. It's not that big a deal. I'm not going to stop this project because two comes before one or none in this point, the original. Hops, here we go. 10 minutes, this was kind of, until I did Twisted Tater 2, my first test for this hop was gonna be bittering. So I put in 0.10 ounces of Idaho number seven at 60 minutes. Let's see how it bitters, was the idea, excuse me. 0.010 of Williamette at 25 minutes and 0.14 ounces of Cascade at five minutes. The rest is pretty much the same. Two and three quarter gallons of water, 160 some degrees, mashed at 153 degrees, set for an hour, transferred, boiled. Video is my next note. I thought I was gonna be clever. I don't need this anymore to tell this story. I thought I was gonna be clever. And time lapse, I just did a time lapse in Scary Ales, which hopefully you saw. If you haven't, it's on this playlist or it's on our YouTube channel. Check that out. I was like, I'm gonna time lapse the entire boil process. And you'll see things, you know, they'll see the whole process, but I'll be able to condense it in a couple minutes. I wasn't real, real well, what's the word, real well versed? Not very knowledgeable on how the time lapse works on my phone. Not knowing that the longer you are recording, the faster it goes somehow, which seems, I don't know how it works, but that's what happens. 
So it won't take you long to share this video. And if you can identify anything that happens in this apart from it starting and ending, put it in the comments because I'm not entirely sure. So let's take a look right now. That was the time lapse video, so I won't be doing that again. Or if I do, I'll be breaking it up into uh, measured chunks so that it goes at the same speed. So of course, after that, uh, uh, after the boil, cooled it to 70 degrees, probably pitched around 69, 68, depending on much dropped after that. Um, the yeast was this time it was it's not Saf Ale, it's Saf Brew. So4, it's a English yeast. That's the brown. I'm going for more in an English style on the brown. Ale and this time again, it's a dry yeast. It's uh, was it 3.3 grams again, fermented for 10 days, bottled, conditioned at room temperature for three weeks, and then in the fridge. You know this whole story. And I did it again. I reached for the bottle opener before I do the label. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get this. I got five more chances to get this right. All right, so let's take a look at the label here. Twisted Tater. Yes, it looks a lot like the Twisted Tater too. Um, label and yeah, that was the intention. That is a single twister tater behind it. If you're not recognizing the texture, that is a there was a real honest to goodness uh, potato skin wallpaper out there I could grab and put that on. So that's a potato skin. Okay, over on the left hand side, it says if you can get past the name, what comes to mind when you hear the word potato? That was a question. I forgot the question mark. I always mess these up. Let's try it again. What comes to mind when you hear the word potato? That's right, beer. Our favorite food at Halloween Horror Nights deserves its own inspired beer. Twisted fried salted carbs on a stick meets its fermented liquid form. It's better than it sounds, or at least I hope it is. It would have to be. Oh, I yeah, blew my own joke. Yeah. I'm not going to edit that. You can laugh at me for being stupid. And my serving suggestion is pour in the glass, eat a lot of salt, and drink. And that's, if you had a twisted tater, it's about what's going to happen if you have this beer with you. Okay, over on the other side, the right side of the label says, Idaho, the state most commonly known for growing, grow, growing, oh, I messed up several on this label. This is also the first label I designed, so first time I had a chance to mess everything up, and I did it in spades. Idaho, the state most commonly known for growing potatoes, is also one of the largest growers of hops in the United States. The Idaho Number no. 7 hop is the current crown jewel of the grower's industry. We've crafted our first brown ale using Idaho Number no. 7 during the brewing process to to test out this hop. And again, apart from making a brown ale, I kind of also wanted to see what it did for bittering. So here we go, tasting it. First brown ale, I'm actually quite excited about this because I, again, style I forget I like. Oh, we got a good hiss, but I got a really bad leverage on that cap. That was my bad, that was anticlimactic. So, all right, not getting a lot of activity in the neck. I'm not quite sure. Okay, I was, was like, I was worried for a second. It's like, how's the carb levels? Carb levels look pretty good. All right, it's brown. Oh, the head's actually <laughs> forming much better than I thought. Yep, it's brown. I had to hold it. I, I'm sorry it's out of the camera, but I wanted to put it directly in front of a white light to make sure it just wasn't a deep amber. It's brown. Definitely brown. Let's see what the uh, aroma is like. Hmm. That's a, I don't know how to describe this. Hmm. I'm getting both, and when I say both, I mean malts and hops, but I'm getting them like, it's almost like there's hops and then there's malts. It's like almost the deeper I breathe, actually, let me, no, wasn't it? I thought if I stuff was already breathing as I got it, maybe that has something to do with the malts. No, I still get hops, then malts. So I'm getting uh, now I'm getting more malts than hops. At first, and may, that might be because, of the, the, as you see, the head's dying. Okay, I'm getting the sweet and almost a little bit of roasted, which makes sense with the really caramelized uh, malts we used. Getting sweet, roasted, and there's still a little bit of hoppiness in there, but it's not anything specific. It's just a general hoppiness, which is, I, it's, I know it's not a specific descriptor, but that's, that's what I'm getting. All right, let's taste it. Maybe that'll help the whole, whole experience of this. Oh, that's good. That's a, for the first brown ale. 
I'm happy so far. Let me give it that was my initial taste. So let me see what I can pick out here. I'm getting that really rich malt flavor. Um, the aroma is sweeter than the taste. There's, it's almost, I can tell that there's roasted malts in there, but it's not a roasted taste. And that's what's just knocking out the sweetness and the, the balance with the sweetness there is keeping the roast, or maybe it's the, the amount of roasted malts. Chocolate malts, a little less roasty flavor than like a black patent malt or something, but still roasted, uh, gives a roasted characteristic in some cases. And it's just, it's just on the cusp of being roasted, but it's not. It's rich, which is really nice in a brown ale, but it's not thick. If that's, if you know what I mean by that, it's like it's when a, when a beer is almost too rich, you don't want to drink it because it feels heavy, heavy. That's what I was looking for. It's not heavy. It's rich, very rich, actually. That is, that's a that's a good dinner beer. It's like I said, this it's that rich flavor, almost no sweet to it. Which is surprising. I expected there's some, some to be, and the hops are just giving bitter, and and it's probably smoothing out the roast as well. But I'm not able to pick out a hop characteristic other than there are indeed hops in it. It's not a it's not a hop forward beer, and it's carbonated beer. <laughs> it's not a it's not a hop forward beer. But there's enough in there to keep this thing from being a malt monster. It's actually really it's su surprisingly good for my first attempt. I mean. I looked up some recipes and got some ideas, but the Idaho hop in there was a wild card, and I, I like what it's doing to that because the, the bitter, the bitter is the strongest profile from the hop, and it's it's nice with that, it's nice with the, uh, with the with the with what the malts are doing to this. I'm happy with that. I have no problem giving that a point. So it's six for thirteen. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, the carbonation, <laughs> the carbonation is only a problem when trying to speak. It's doing wonders for the beer. The uh, it's actually giving the mouthfeel. Uh, I actually hadn't even noticed the mouth mouthfeel. So that's actually quite smooth, quite smooth for how rich this is. So, yeah, that's a winner. That's a winner. This is. I'm gonna. I'll, I'm gonna say I would make this again. But since it's my first brown, it will probably change. But the fact that I would make it again gives it that point. So yeah, that's six for thirteen. That was, that's, I'm happy about this. I'm happy because of the style, the name, and the, the testing of that hop. This has been, this is, this, this beer is kind of the epitome. I've said that more than once on this episode, but it's, it's, it's very representative, I should say, of what this project was. I wanted to explore new things. I've never done this style. This is the first intention of using this hop. I ended up using it in another beer first. And I've learned, uh, well, I said it's the first time I've done this, done this style, but I've, I already have some ideas for the next one, but very happy how this came out. So this is this is exactly what this project is about, and I'm happy with this result, and probably more happy with what I'm walking away from that I'm going to do further with this beer. So that's that's a double win. That's, that's and there's beer. Yeah, that's a triple win. All right, that's it. If you're new to this episode, please, or this series, please subscribe. Hit the bell to get the alerts on the next episodes. Leave questions, comments, or suggestions at the bottom, or in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them as fast as I can. Thank you for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with beer number nine. So I will see you in that episode. Thank you for watching Is It Beer Yet Video Edition. Is It Beer Yet is part of the NewsAz.com Internet Entertainment Network. Visit newsaz.com for all our podcasts, including the original Is It Beer Yet Home Brewing audio series. Follow our social media pages for more on this project and all the beers and brewing we do at newsaz.com. We're Newsaz Podcasts on Facebook, Newsaz on Instagram, and Newsaz on Twitter. If you'd like to learn how you can help support the work we do and get access to exclusive content, check out our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash newsaz. And you can always send us an email at podcast at newsaz.com. Thanks again for watching.